Hey, Dad. D, what up? Angela, what up? Hey, y'all, look, we finna get straight into it. How many of y'all got baby moms or baby dads? Drop a one. If you got a baby mom or a baby dad, drop a one. What up, what up? Good morning to everybody saying what's up. What's up with y'all? Blondie187, you said clickbait. Absolutely not. You might want to hang out for a second. We finna politics. All them ones. All right, I got one more question before we had this conversation. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. If you feel attacked during this conversation, I'm attacking you, but it's with love though. That's number one. This conversation gonna require honesty. So all you capping ass niggas and capping ass bras that like to fake perfect and act like any of us live perfect lives, you you need to leave the live right now. You feel me? And when I left him, he left the kid. Damn, that's unfortunate, sis. I'm I'm sorry you uh you gotta deal with some sucker shit like that. All right, y'all. So look, one more question. Drop a two if you ever have been to a place or been in a space where you actually did feel like you hate them. Drop a two. And I'm gonna share some insight on my life. You feel me? Because I feel like me sharing some insight on my life may be able to help you with your situation. You always honest, so they should know how this is gonna go. No one should be offended. I agree. And I'm gonna say this again, y'all. We gonna get into some politicking. I'm going to use myself and my life as a real example. Please do not personalize any of that and think like a nigga attacking you from a negative place because I'm not. But trust me, I know it. Like I got five. I got five mothers to all nine of my children. I dream we had a baby. Uh, so look, I, I'm going to say focus because I don't want to lose focus. You feel me? Because I feel like a lot of people need this conversation. Sometimes I do hate her, though. So I feel you. I glad this ain't for me. I don't have none, but I'm nosy. Feelings of murder once or twice. Sheesh. Damn. So some, look, I'm being funny, but on a serious note, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I'm sorry that you're in a position with somebody that you're going to be attached to till the day you die. And those are the feelings. Like, that sucks. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. We finna get into it. So uh, I'm going to say it one more time, y'all. I mean this with love, okay? Because some of y'all are going to feel attacked. Some of y'all are going to be like, what the fuck? You feel me? It just, it is what it is. But it got to be said. So first and foremost, before I get into the conversation, I'm going to simply say like, hey, drop a one if y'all know I don't wrote co-parent, co-parenting curriculums. Because some of y'all don't know this. I don't know, I don't know what rock y'all been under because I've taught it a million times. But drop a one if y'all know I've written co-parenting curriculums. That catalog that I keep telling y'all to get is in there. So I'm going to just tell you again. For those of you who are dealing with this bullshit, it's niggas like me that are transparent, that share their real stories, their real downfalls, their real shortcomings, and their real failures that y'all can actually learn from that teach you different things. For everybody that's sensitive sensitive and tender, it's time to go because I'm finna shoot and it's just going to be what it is. (laughs) If you want to screen record or take notes, this is where you start taking notes. So number one. I got a question for everybody that, that that's had an issue with the other half. If you can suppress your innermost feelings and demeanor, for anybody that's asking, I'm reading straight out of the co-parenting curriculum in the catalog. If you can suppress your innermost feelings, demeanor, and tongue for the sake of a dollar or opportunity, you can surely do the same to have a functioning family structure. Let me pause it. You motherfuckers, and I ain't talking to nobody on here directly. You motherfuckers will suck dick for money. Y'all will kiss ass for money. Y'all will yes sir, no sir for money. Y'all will change your tone of y'all voice for money. Y'all will dress up nice. You will you will cut your motherfucking locks off at the job tell your black ass cut your hair. But you niggas will not muster up the same energy to create a functioning environment for the people that you claim to love the most, which is the child. That is one of the most bewildering things I've ever come across in my life. How the fuck did y'all, everybody, y'all love my kids. I die for my kids. I do this. No, the fuck you want, nigga. You don't even know how to suppress your attitude, my nigga. You don't even know how to put your shit to the back of Marie. I love Chelsea. Her name will not be slandered. Bitch, shut up. I'm teaching. Get your goofy ass out of here. You the only person that came on here trying to create a narrative. And yes, I called you a bitch with full intent. Shut up, bitch. Now get off my live. You being messy. 
I done slandered your monkey ass. Get the fuck out of here. Bitch, I'm in my bag trying to teach you want to come on here and be the goofy one. Any, any, anybody else that want to try to create a narrative that I haven't even articulated yet, I'm blocking. Y'all know I don't even block niggas. I'm blocking your goofy ass too. Bitch, I'm on here doing real big dog politics and shut your ass up. And you block. And I'm sorry I had to call her the B word, y'all, but I had to let her know how serious I was. Bitch, get out of here. All right, number two. Money, tangible items, and materials will not hold you accountable at a later date, but your children will. Can we be real? Drop a one if any of y'all ever had resentment towards your mom or your dad at a later date because you were bamboozled as a child. But y'all know y'all, our kids aren't ki our kids ain't gonna be kids forever. They are gonna grow up and they are gonna ask questions. They are gonna ask like, hey, my daddy said this wasn't that. A mama said this wasn't that. So a lot of y'all that, that, that get caught up in your instant gratification and your instant feelings and you make rash decisions, you're going to be made to, to live up to the motherfuckers later too. Like I tell this story all the time. Me and my mama had a falling out because I'm not going to go deep into my family history because I want to continue to teach. But some shit happened with my mama and my daddy that I didn't know the truth about to a later date. And that shit really bothered me to the point that I had to pull up on my mama as a grown ass man to be like, mom, I can ask you a question. She's like, what's up, babe? I'm like, hey, I was talking to daddy and he told me this wasn't this and this wasn't that. And we had a moment of truth. And I remember spazzing on my mama. I was very disappointed. So I'm letting y'all know, the decisions that you make right now, don't think like motherfuckers ain't gonna pull your car later. You feel me? So bro, the way you treat your baby mama right now, it may come back to haunt you. Sis, the way that you treat your baby daddy right now, it may come back to haunt you. And I'm gonna bring it back to the source. If y'all claim that y'all love y'all children so much, y'all do anything for y'all children. That's, that's, that's your biggest thing in life. My kids, my kids, my kids. Y'all can't do something as small as put your grown issues to the side. That shit is very complex to me. It is, it is, it is mind blowing that like for money, man, y'all, when it comes to money, niggas will do anything. Your boss disrespect your time, disrespect your energy, disrespect all that shit. Nigga, you don't say nothing. You get your motherfucking ass up day after day and show up again and again. You and this nigga had a falling out three years ago. You still holding some shit over his head. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something else, too, about mental health. For those of you, right, because this is some scary shit. I've seen this, too, in co-parenting. You will have the greatest Sunday of your life. You know you're about to see your baby mama or your baby dad on Monday. You purposely will muster up negative energy and negative feelings so you can give them a sour interaction. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You know what type of weird ass nigga you gotta be to purposely put yourself in a dark space cause you finna engage with somebody that you quote unquote don't like? You know what type of stupid ass shit that is? You know what type of unnecessary ass stress that is? I know some of y'all on here. You, your motherfucking weekend was the shit. Roseman Avenue, bruh. You didn't hate your baby mama when you wanted to stick your dingling inside that mingling. It's the truth. Uh, Roseman, please shut the fuck up. We, I don't know if you late to the party. We done already like got past that. We in the curriculum, bro. Please, like, it's always a nigga that's trying to be so smart they sound dumb and shit, bro. Just like, sit, sit in the back of the classroom and listen. We teaching out of curriculum. The title clearly wasn't for me. It was for the people that hate their baby dad or baby mom. So like, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. This the part where you just shut the fuck up. You look stupid in front of everybody else that know what's going on right now. Okay, thank you, bro, sis. So anyway, y'all, that shit, a lot of y'all don't know, like that directly affects you. You be having the best, best fucking month of your life. And then you purposely put yourself in a dark space so you can attempt to give somebody an irregular interaction when y'all meet each other. Take it the fuck easy. Number three, your kids will not be kids forever. They will one day ask or seek questions as to why there's distance to begin with. You will have to answer to those questions. Number four, Children don't ask for your welcome party to the world. You force it on them. Isn't it only fair that we make it as smooth as possible? So I'm gonna tell you again, y'all. I've never heard in my life, I've never heard in my life that a man was like, man, I was chilling one day and then my balls started to tingle. And I heard a little baby voice in my ear that said, make me, create me. That's not a real thing. Sis, your pussy ain't never tingled. And it said, damn, I can't wait for a nigga to shoot some nut up in here. No, we go out as adults and we make decisions. We interact with people. 
And then we have the audacity. We have the audacity to motherfucking give them a shitty ass life. Ain't no motherfucking child ever asked us to be here. Ain't no motherfucking child said, man, I can't wait to get to this stupid ass world that's full of drama, that's full of hatred, full of murder and mayhem and have a distant ass spread out family that don't know how to love on me collectively. But that's really what we sign them up for. And more times than not, I tell everybody this, adult politics have nothing to do with children business. If you don't like your baby daddy, fuck him. You ain't got to like him. If you don't like your baby mama, fuck her. You ain't got to like her. But it is important for the collective identity of the family for y'all to be able to be on one accord. And listen, y'all know we preaching to the choir because a lot of us, come, like my parents got divorced when I was one. A lot of y'all parents did the same thing. Y'all think about the effects that had on you when you had siblings on this side of the family, but you couldn't get the time in with them. You don't know them now. Think about when, when you had an uncle over here that you loved the fuck out of, but y'all but y'all but y'all relationship never got evolved to what it needed to be because your mama and your daddy was steady fucking uh steady fucking bickering. So like I ain't gonna lie, a lot of the shit I'm reading, y'all, we are testaments of this information. We live in that. Some of y'all got brothers that live in the same fucking city that you don't really know that nigga, man. And that's sad. That's your and y'all, one of the biggest things I tell parents, I've even had this conversation with my baby mamas. When we die. And that's because a lot of y'all don't think down the road. A lot of y'all not thinking long term. You just caught up in instant gratification in your bag. When we die, because hopefully we die before our children. When we die, they're going to be each other's first responder for safety, security, love, protection, all that. Why the fuck would you not want to bond them as tightly and closely as you can? Bitch, we could leave here any day now. We could get in a car accident in the day and then babies on their fucking own. Imagine you got seven children who all divided. So now they got to go. Listen, you know how many people right here like, and I'm not saying this to, to make light of y'all situation because I know that shit sting at night. Man, you know how many people on here right now in their 30s searching for their tribe? You know how many niggas like 40 years old trying to find their tribe? Nigga, we could have, nigga, we had a tribe when we was born, but we was raised by two adults who didn't understand the importance of a collective identity. So they let their personal feelings get in, get in the way of our relationship now we got a bunch of Joneses all over the city that don't know each other. Niggas is out here 40 years old trying to find their tribe. I was born with one. Y'all, so like I said, a lot of this shit, I ain't even got to stress because a lot of us are walking testaments. A lot of us dealing with this shit right now. A lot of us have never had, you know, something else that's real sad. A lot of us have never had equivalent experiences with our families. And I'm going I'm to I'm help you understand. Because your daddy may have been the primary you don't know what it's like for your mama to cheer you on at a basketball game because only your daddy was there. And because they couldn't communicate properly, mama never got a fucking invite. You only know about celebratory moments with your mom because her and daddy couldn't communicate. So you don't know what it's like for your daddy to come in that bitch and brag on you because you a good cheerleader and brag on you because you a good basketball player and be able to boast and be in the motherfucking stands like, that's my boy, that's my girl, blah, blah, blah. Y'all like, this the type of shit that our children are gonna miss like, I'm not telling none of y'all to go make amends with baby mama and get back together, rekindle the flame. I'm simply telling you that we be ruining the long-term uh, evolution, uh, camaraderie, collective identity of a lot of our children because as adults, we allow our distaste for one another to affect the whole fucking family. I'm gonna read like two more of these and then I'm going to another page. Number five, and y'all drop a one if you can relate. Drop A1 if you can relate. Tino, what's up, big bro? Y'all, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. The only reason I'm able to speak on this shit so fluently is, number one, I was raised in a blended family. And number two, I have five baby mamas and nine children. It is work to keep them children bonded. I know a lot of y'all see that shit and think it's like all roses and candy and it's beautiful. Y'all, it is a full-time job. And I'm not complaining at all because I made all my children intentionally. So it's my fault. It's my issue. And I'm big dog and I'm going to deal with it every time. But I'm just telling y'all, this shit work. You feel me? So for, to the bros, especially on here, who be like, yeah, DG, I can't wait to get my bread right, soccer. Bro, it's bigger than money, my nigga. The articulation going to be on another level. Your patience going to be on another level. Your level of empathy is going to have to be on another level. Your ability to communicate how important it is to have a collective identity, bro, is going to have to be crisp because you're dealing with multiple personalities and one going to be like, well, I don't like this about that one. I don't think this one should get that. Well, you bought this one a house and I ain't get that. that so, bro, to the bros especially, 
And yeah, bro, before the money, like I have, I have. If y'all listen, when y'all get y'all catalog, matter of fact, man, this real spill. Look at the picture. This before the bread. I'm glad bro said that. Cause niggas always be like, I can't wait to get my money. Bro, it's bigger than money. Look at that picture if y'all can see it. That is J-Rock, that's Brittany, and that's Tiff. That's Derek and Derricka. And if you look at Tiff and J-Rock's stomach, they're both pregnant in this picture. This is before the money. You feel me? So to all my niggas, I'd be like, man, I can't wait to get my bread, bro, so I could. Bro, it's bigger than money, my nigga. It's way bigger than money. Like, money is an additive. Money smooths out, smooths out the situation. Sm I said smoothes. Money smooths out the situation. But, bro, it's going to have to be some shit in you. And it's going to have to be some shit in those collective parties where y'all are able to figure out how to make it work. Because y'all man, y'all know it's common knowledge. Like, you know, men and women, we, we, we come with jealousy at times. We come with comparison at times. You feel me? So it ain't it ain't that simple to just to be like, man, I'm going to get some money and then I'm going to go bing, bing, boom, boom. Nah, your ass will be. We ain't got to get into that. But anyway, y'all, number five. And drop a one if you can relate. Sibling resentment many times sets in because the other parent, uh, I'm sorry, because of the other parents or their lack of communication and time spent. Having a broken home is one instance. Having children that envy one another is a whole different level of difficulty to overcome. Drop a one if you ever felt like your daddy loved his other kids more than he loved you. Drop a one if you ever felt like your mama loved them other kids more than they love you. Y'all, that's a shitty feeling. I've never felt that feeling, but I can I, I can empathize with those that have, and I know that got to be a fucked up way to feel to be like, damn, that nigga don't fuck with me how he fuck with them. And a lot of times, because we're children, especially, we don't look at the whole scope of things. We don't come to the realization that like, bro, it's not that your mama don't fuck with you how she fuck with them. It's that your daddy make it extremely hard for your mama to have a relationship with you, or it's that your mama make it extremely hard for your daddy to have a relationship. So you grow up in this comparison state to the point where not only are you going to resent your mom or your dad, but you're not going to start to resent your siblings because you feel like they getting something that you should be getting. Y'all, this shit run deep. So I'm going to just say it again. Next time you in your fucking bag. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm not reading all these. I'm only reading the first five. I'm going to go to another page. I felt like my baby dad loved and favored one of his kids over mine. Something I had to deal with. Yeah, y'all. Um, it happens for sure. So y'all. This one I want to read especially. If y'all can hear me, drop a one, please. Because I need y'all to hear this one. I don't, I don't need nobody not to hear this one. Facts, my brother and I are the closest. However, he is hurting because my dad raised his adopted children, not his biological. Man, this shit happens every day. And it, it like you say, he hurting. It sucks because y'all like, we only get one set of parents, biological ones. So a lot of us got to live with that shit forever. A lot of us going to die with that boy. A lot of us going to die with that lack. A lot of us going to die with that pain. Like, y'all, as a parent, you are their first responder. You typically going to be their first love. You going to be their first union, their first bond, their first ass whooping. If you whoop ass, I don't. They first, they first everything. So when that detachment sets in, man, it take niggas a long time. Like, I ain't going to lie, y'all. Like, me and my mama have gotten to it on multiple occasions because I feel like she held me to a standard that she didn't hold my brothers to. And that shit broke my heart. That shit really would make me really sad some days. Like, damn, bro, I got to be damn near perfect. But my brothers don't, you know, they allowed to make mistakes. <clears throat> That's my feelings. I'm not saying my feelings are facts. I'm just telling y'all my feelings in the situations I've had with my mom. That shit would really make me sad, like, to the point where I've cried as an adult man being like, damn, I go have one baby out of wedlock, mom. You want to hit me with the fucking Bible and... Nah, bro, I'm the middle child. You want to hit me with the motherfucking Bible and send me sermons and get on my ass. Man, my older brother, and I love my brother. I'm not complaining about his behavior at all, but... Man, my older brother, if anybody know my older brother read my book, my older brother is a motherfucking hell raiser. And I love... I'm not saying... I'm not complaining. I love it about my brother because he done protected me on so many occasions. He done fucked so many niggas up by his little brother. But, man, Eric... Eric, Eric Grace is a hell raisin. Nigga taught me damn near everything I know. <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie, I felt like her patience with him was way stronger than mine. Like, I could have a baby out of the way, like it's the end of the world. My brother has done some very interesting things in life, and I, I seen my mama show up with the utmost patience, and that, that, that fucked with me up until like, I'm 34, y'all, that fucked with me up until like 32 years old. To where like, we had to have like, blow out arguments and I had to go off on her and just like really 
express myself in a very aggressive way because I've been bottling this shit for 20 years. Like, damn, why everybody get a pass but me? Why you go so hard on me? I'm the one that got to be damn near perfect. Everybody else get a, oh, I understand, babe. Da, da, da. So, y'all, yeah, I'm just giving that example to say, like, man, y'all on here. I ain't even got to get that example. Y'all on this live with me. Y'all, I ain't the only nigga that, got, that done had mama issues. Some of y'all done had mama issues. Some of y'all done had daddy issues. Some of y'all done had both issues. Y'all know this shit is real. This re this is real fucking life. We get scarred at 13 and that shit be sticking to us till we 45 years old. So again, just getting back to the parenting aspect, y'all. This shit is important. So again, do me a favor real one more time, y'all. Drop a one if you can hear me. Because if you don't take nothing from this live, I need you to take something from what I'm about to say right now. I need you to take this shit in totality. The middle child is special for real. I heard that. It's funny you say that. I seen like a, a TikTok the other day and they were just saying like the middle child is always very interesting. I can agree though. Uh, shout out to my mama because her middle child turned out to be a bad motherfucker. All right, y'all. So on page 50 in the co-parent ticket, and I'm going to say this again. If y'all ain't got y'all catalog, I already told y'all only the first 500 was free. Y'all from co-parenting to marketing to parenting to guns, real estate, gold, art, business. I can go on and on. Y'all, if you do not have this entire body of work, I don't know what the fuck to tell y'all. I've, I've, I've only been like a walking example of everything I teach for the last 12 years. So I'm going to say it again. Click the link in the bar and go get your shit. Because once they not free no more, you can see the regular price on the website. That shit, nah, nah, $99.99. You feel me? And I know what I'm teaching is shit that like, I mean, why ain't you got to do that? Y'all, like, I, I improve whole families. You feel me? Like, I've been doing this since day one. That's why people know me for my family. They don't know me for my money. They don't know me just for my marketing. They know, bro, it's like, oh, that's the dude with the kids. They know me as a father, as a leader, and as my family. So, again, y'all, we on page 50 in the co-parenting curriculum. Let's get it. Uh, number. This page is called the Kid Glove Theory. Money is blue. Bro, you definitely shouldn't be waiting no more. Shoot them an email, bro. Y'all stuff went out last week. Um, Kid Glove Theory. Kid Glove Theory. Are you dealing with an emotional partner? Hold on, y'all. My bad. Let me start over. Dealing with an emotional partner, a car that doesn't like going over 70 miles per hour, or an enemy that could be triggered by the slightest sense of resistance, you have one of two options in these cases. You're going to either put on your kid gloves, remove your normal reaction, cater to the sensitivity, or lack thereof so this interaction can go as smoothly, or you're going to go or you're going to trigger them anyway and intensify what is already a boiling pot. Let me let me slow it down if you don't understand. Any street niggas that been on any street niggas on here or anybody that's been in street activity, drop a one if you ever ran into your enemy at the wrong time and you had to basically like hold off on going to war because right now wasn't the time. Drop a one. Drop a one if you ever been nose to nose with a nigga or a bra that you know you got smoked with, but y'all was in the wrong environment. So you had to strategically come up with a way to like, you know what? I ain't gonna max his ass out now. This ain't the time we're going straight to jail or this shit gonna get too real. We're gonna fuck our money up. Whatever the case is. Just have you ever been in an adverse situation that can go real left, but you had to use your motherfucking brain to make sure like, nah, this shit ain't worth dying for right now. We gonna fuck up the money right now. We gonna ruin the whole play right now. Let me let me chill. So y'all, that is called the kid glove theory. And that's what get really perplexing to me, y'all, because most of us come from backgrounds. Man, we know how to like handle certain situations very gentle so they don't go left we 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 have common sense to know what type of humans we dealing with we be knowing and niggas will still get on the phone and trigger the shit out of the other person and just escalate the disagreement so let me keep reading take my advice from shooting someone to burning the engine out to fighting for full custody it is so much easier and less stressful to wear your kid gloves and handle this thing as smoothly as possible do not forget regardless of you putting on the gloves or not how the sensitive how how sensitive the other party can be in the situation this is bigger than both of you all this is about the children you made it to adulthood and have some sense of self-help hence why you're reading this currently we need to give them the identical opportunity or even more this is what the kid glove theory means once you have an understanding and can identify the triggers and things that cause an individual to negatively react you do your absolute best to no longer touch on those things let me give you some examples. Some of y'all don't like when your, your baby daddy may not like when you say my baby, my baby, my baby. 
So just say our baby. Why you being petty? Put on your fucking kid gloves. You know that shit trigger your ex. Stop doing that. Bro, you know it's triggering when you call her a bitch or when you attack her for, for her mom duties. Bro, it is, it, it is an eloquent way to be like, hey, what's up, baby mom? What you up to? Nothing, I'm chilling. Shit, I was thinking, you think maybe we could do blah, 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 or we could try it this way? Not like shit. Real dads don't do that. Real moms don't. Come on, man. Put your fucking kid gloves on. Like, again, and this, this is where it be mind-blowing. Because if you get your ass pulled over, I've seen it a million times. Niggas are seatbelt, chin up, chest out. Yes, yes, sir. Here you go. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I was just heading to get some milk from the store, sir. Yep, I got three guns in the back. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I made straight A's in school. Like, you're telling motherfucker your life story with complete uh, etiquette and gentleness. Let it be the motherfucker that you slept with and you let shoot come all up in your pussy. Y'all created a whole life. You won't put your kid gloves on for them. You feel me? So, y'all, it is super important. That, and I know it's not beyond us because we know when to do it. Some of y'all done ran into men and women who way tougher than you. And it's okay, y'all, because this people, I done shot niggas, but there's people out there tougher than me. Way more crazier. You know how to put on your kid gloves. You done ran into a motherfucking woman like, bro, that little nigga, like, he ain't got nothing to lose. I'm finna just get up out of here. These niggas shooting broad day now. This new generation is different. And I'm saying it from the horse mouth. I really done been in that space before. And I know how I shoot a nigga. I've done it. I know, like, I'm, I ain't scared to pull my trigger. I know I got common sense and I'm strategic. These niggas just shoot you in your face in broad daylight. I'm finna put on my kid gloves, bro. I'm finna handle this situation as gentle as possible because it's absolutely not worth dying for. Or I done shot a motherfucking 20-year-old today because he moving weird in the back of 7-Eleven. So, y'all, like, I'm gonna say it again. You have it in you. You make a conscious decision to treat the person that you laid. Like, y'all was eating these people's asses at one time. Y'all was hand in hand. Y'all, like, I'm not going to go too deep into this one because I never, I, I don't even know how y'all be unloving people. I don't even know how y'all get so mad at somebody that you purposely program yourself to then unlove them. So that, that's why, like, y'all can see despite how any of my relationships have played out, y'all can see me standing next to the mother of my children. Or you, or, like, the picture I just showed you, you liable to see all of us in one room at one time. Because I, I don't even know how to hold you to the highest honor and then treat you like pure shit because I'm mad at you temporarily. I mean, y'all done seen some of my shit publicly, you feel me? I done had niggas do straight whole shit to me. But I still, like, it's too much work to even try to make myself unlove a motherfucker that I know I genuinely love. We just didn't work out in a couple in a couple standpoint. But I still got love for this nigga. Still want him to win. Still want him to prosper. They did some sucker shit. We ain't together no more. Life goes on. But we still motherfucking family. You feel me? Like, you can ask any of the mothers of my children. They'll tell you, like, nah. That nigga is gonna remind you, like, nigga, you know, you know, we still family, nigga. I don't care because you mad at me. What you? Listen, y'all, I'm that baby daddy. I'm. I send your voice note, like, I don't care because you mad with your bald head ass. We still family though. I ain't dying tomorrow, motherfucker. So I'm gonna call you again with your with your rotten ass. You you being a nasty motherfucker today, but I still love you, nigga. And if you need me, or if them lame ass, yeah, like I'm that baby daddy. I'm gonna sprinkle a joke in there. Well, that lame-ass nigga you dating don't work out. You know what I'm saying? Call me. You know, let's do a little razzle that. But seriously, though, I don't know how to unlove people. You feel me? So my, my brain don't even work that way to be like, what? We're not together? You're dating? Ah. Oh. Bloop, 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 bloop. Must hate this bitch immediately. No, my shit don't. I don't work like that. that that's goofy as fuck to me. But to each his own. All right, y'all, let me finish reading this. Once you have an understanding that can identify the triggers and things that cause an individual to negatively react, you do your absolute best to no longer touch on those things. Yes, this requires removing your ego pride and your negative thoughts itching to hit your tongue every time you see their face. For starters, revenge costs too much time, energy, oxygen, and thought processing. Allow life. I'm going to hear it again. Lacey, you said, I'm that baby mom. You can call for anything. Shout out to you, sis, because you get it. Y'all family. Real quick, I got to say this because Lacey commented that. I think a lot of y'all don't take into take in uh, account the trickle-down effect. Man, if your baby mama falling apart and she dropped dead right now, do you know that's about, do you know how that's going to affect your children? Uh, if your baby daddy is falling apart and he can't be chin up, chest out, and a great leader to your son or your daughter, do you know how that's going to affect them? I ain't telling you to stop your world. I ain't telling you to break your neck. I ain't telling you to do any of that. 
I'm just simply saying, y'all, we are family, man. We family at the end of the day. Nigga, we stuck here. We got blood ties. Like, I'm going to know you till I die. Like, y'all, my parents are 56. I've been grown. They still have to communicate. Still to this day, they communicate. My daddy was just like, y'all know my bought mama crib two doors down from mom. I just, it be days I walk out my yard and see my daddy car down there. Like, they're going to communicate. He going to stop by. That was his wife at one time. That's his baby mama. That's his son mama. So uh, will he put, I'm not telling none of y'all to go put on the cake and save a motherfucker. If you got it, then you don't do it. But I'm just simply telling you like, y'all family, bro. Y'all made a decision at one point to create life. You can't take that back. Y'all have a collective responsibility to make sure that they the fuck okay in this crazy, wicked, stinking ass world. Y'all family. For starters, and shout out to all the, all the mothers of my children that treat me with that type of love. Like, I'll give you an example real quick. A drop of one, if y'all be seeing me at Tiff House and I be like, I'm the man of this house. This is my house. Where my food at? Where Din Din? That's like, that's that's our running joke and whatnot. But point I'm making is, that is one of the mothers of my children. She'll never take her hat off of me. She'll never be like, nigga, call that other bitch. Call that. Ain't, don't you got another baby? No. Nah. Nigga, that's y'all daddy. I got four children with that man. That is y'all motherfucking daddy. Y'all daddy hungry? I'm gonna make y'all daddy a buffet. Y'all daddy need this? I'm on it. And I treat it the same way. Like, that mother has not worked a job since we had our first child. That mother does not have to worry about none of this shit that the average woman or human has to when it comes to living in America. Because she blocked for me 1,000%, I blocked for her 2,000%. So she know what I like and what I don't like, vice versa. So you know what I did? I said, oh, that shit you don't like about life? Like uh, financial responsibilities, having to run, having to do this, having to do that. My nigga, I got you. I'm going to block for you to the day I die. And that shit that I like to do, I like to get tucked in the bed like a little baby. I like to get fed. I like to get blah, blah, blah. Hey. Niggas gonna show up. We family. And I'm not saying she the only one. I'm just giving y'all that example because a lot of people have seen me, them videos while I walk in the house and be like, where's Din Din? I'm the man of this house. The man of this. <laughs> and that's not my house, literally. Like, I'm in my house now. But yeah, y'all, we just have that understanding. Like, nigga, we family. I need this man to live a long fucking time. He got four daughters. I need him here for them daughters. And she is the mother that takes not only her children, but be taking everybody's children. That's, that's where she cut different. Because she knows she got a busy baby daddy. She knows she got a baby daddy that got the world on his back. From employees to relatives to baby mamas to children. Y'all, my baby mamas and my children alone is 14 humans I have to look after. 14 humans I have to have, I have to concern, my with, concern myself with to some extent. She understands that. So that, that woman will round up not only her, her four, but the rest of my kids from other people and hold them the fuck down. She understands the, the mission. I'm not knocking at any of my other mothers or children that don't, but I'm just saying like that one I'm specifically talking about. Question though, bro. As long as they respect and honor you, it's good. When they don't follow your rules and stick to the script, it don't work out. Real question. No, sis. So look, I don't put a script on them and they don't put no script on me. We all grown. I don't function in ownership. Like not being funny to say this, but listen to what I just said. She know what I don't like, and I know what she don't like. That's where the value is. That's where she blocked for me. So if I, so like, we all like, as humans, right? We all have things about life that we suck at, that we're not good at. If you find a human in his lifetime that go like, hey, I know you ain't good at that. Don't you ever worry about that. I got you, my nigga. Guess what I'm gonna do for them? Sis, what you suck at? <sighs> nigga, don't you ever worry about that. Nigga, I go to war with the world and bring it home before you have to go work on somebody's job because I know you really don't want to do that. You feel me? And for her, she know the things I really don't want to do. So she going to show up. So no, it ain't a, it ain't really a follow the script type of thing. It's more so of a like, I ain't going to lie. I just think a lot of people just struggle with condi with uh, unconditional love. And I think a lot of us ain't going to experience that, which is sad. We going to, the bulk of us, and me included, I have dealt with people that love me conditionally. As long as I'm doing what they want me to do, they'll show up. She is one of the humans. And I'm not going to say she always been there because she wasn't. 
But in our last two to three years, she definitely has evolved to that place where she like, I'm going to love this nigga for who he actually is and not who I'm trying to force him to be. So because we have, and I ain't even say, and I'm going to say it again, I ain't got that understanding with everybody. 100% don't. But with that one, we got that understanding. Like, that nigga smiling and happy, all right. He come to me and tell me, like, one of you bitches on bullshit. I don't like your ass no more. I'm on bullshit with him. But, and then, like, shit, with, with Britney, I tell everybody, like, we not as close as that mom. But Britney said, man, listen, one thing about my baby mama, right? And it's why, like, she get on my nerves. Like, we all do. We all get on each other's nerves. But she gonna be my nigga forever. If Britney was on here right now, that's Derek's mom, my oldest son. Like, I know Britney since we was four years old. Britney will tell you. If you ask her, what's one question you always ask this man when you talk to him? <laughs> she gonna be like, every time I talk to my baby dad, I ask that nigga, do he need me to come beat somebody ass? She understand the assignment. So are we as close? No. But she still move as a protector for me. Any new relationship I'm in, anything. Do I need to catch a flight? Cause like, and, that, and that's, that's me and her thing. Cause she been fighting on my behalf since we was kids. Like literally like, it's a couple bitches out here done got the beats. Cause they done tried me and she'd be like, Wait, and I'm talking about little as hell. Derek, mama, y'all ain't nothing. Derek, Brittany gotta be about 5'1, motherfucking 120 pounds. But she gonna get out there and square up and she gonna run them face. <laughs> so at 34 and 35, it's still a level of reciprocity there. Like, again, we're not as close as we once was because she got a man that she loved dearly, which I totally respect that. But we still have a relationship where she gonna show up as my protector 250 racks you said that ain't it grow up your mother tell your mother to grow up but anyway the point i'm making is she still serve as a protector she's still not going for nobody fucking with that little Derek that she knew when we was little kids and vice versa if she called me right now and like oh it's static over here where i'm at oh don't worry i got resources and niggas all over the nation i'll make a phone call for you Give me five minutes. I'll be right back. So, yeah, so this is not necessarily a script. Like I said, she got a whole a whole husband. She got a whole a whole life. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to her. Like, man, they got tripped. She done made new babies and all. But there is still a position where it's like, hey, leave my baby daddy alone. Whoever you are in life, leave the man alone. You feel me? Don't fuck with him a certain way. Because if you fuck with him a certain way, I'll come see about your ass. Literally, and like, she's not playing. She literally get on the plane in person and be like, so who who tried you? You know? And I'm that same little kid at 34. She did. Her right there. I'm sure her husband don't like you still speaking to her. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Y'all would probably have to really know us in real life to know all that. Other than that, it's just internet assumptions. And you know, them shit is everywhere. All right, y'all. So let me finish reading. Number one. Do you ever slow down and stop speeding when you see police? If your if your answer is, I, I want y'all to yes or no these for me, y'all. Y'all particip y'all particip y'all participation is appreciated. Number one, do you ever slow down and stop when you see the police? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you ever slow down and stop? Right. It's yeah, and it, it's natural. You feel me? So y'all ain't nobody got to cap and be super tough and lie we naturally do it's not because we scared it's because most of us don't want the interaction period i don't even want to talk to y'all get the fuck on nigga go chase somebody else go search another nigga's car number two do you ever stop yourself mid-conversation and say i'm not going to curse you out right now because my mother is sitting next to me y'all ever been through that you got a motherfucker on your phone with the with the foolishness and you like Boy, you lucky my motherfucking kids right here. Boy, I slapped the dog shit out your ass. Yes or no? You ever you ever stop from getting on a motherfucker ass because you want to show respect to your other to your other constituents that's in the room? I ain't gonna lie. If y'all ever been in that position and y'all didn't, y'all might want to reevaluate uh, y'all de-escalation process. Because if some of y'all tough in front of y'all kids, you will die in front of your kids too. I hear y'all, but like, play with the right nigga. They'll blow your brains out in front of anybody. I ain't bragging y'all, but I shot a nigga in front of mine. You can only imagine what I do in front of yours. You hear me? So to everybody who, oh, I, I do it whenever. Y'all better take it easy. I shot a nigga in front of mine. What you think I'd do to you in front of yours? 
I popped a nigga with mine sitting there. How wild? How, how, how much you think I wild out on your ass? If your kids right there, niggas, I let the gun go around mine. So I'ma just that's off topic, but to all you super tough motherfuckers on like, nigga, hell no. I I'll get it in anywhere. You better find the right niggas to play with. Cause this niggas out here that'll man nigga lay you down in front of your grandma and, and look that bitch in her face like, do you need some too, auntie? No, no. No. Somebody said you had to protect them. That's why. Duh, we get that. The point is. I'm not going to get off subject. For all you tough people that don't know how to like de-escalate the situation based on who you around or who's in the room, please reevaluate life before y'all run into the wrong motherfucker that care less than you do. Because there's some niggas out here. They absolutely out there. Number three, have you ever felt the urge to curse someone out or react in an irrational manner? But was like, man, I got to get this money. I need this job and I can't afford to be in jail right now. Yes or no? Yeah, you gotta know who you're talking to because some people don't care, y'all. And I care. Like, I got plenty of sense. It's some niggas out here that's way tougher than me. With switches, they don't care. <laughs> you feel me? They don't care. We'll shoot all everybody in the car. Mm -mm. I'm a smart nigga. I'm, I'm not a dumb. I'm not a young dumb nigga, y'all. I ain't claiming that shit. I'm not a tough guy. I am a father of many children. I'm a very educated man with plenty of sense. <laughs> I don't I don't play with niggas that ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> Cause I got plenty to lose. <laughs> so all you niggas on here with nothing to lose, y'all go find y'all something to live for. Number four. Have you ever raised your hand at an enemy and thought to yourself, I'm not gonna beat your ass this time. I'm gonna give you a pass for whatever reason. Drop a yes or a no. Has that ever have you have listen? Have you ever ran into a motherfucker you got smoked when you like, boy, I'm finna get me one. And then he was like, damn, it's six people right here, two over there, police just rolled by. I ain't even gonna have time to get off. I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm fire the nigga ass up one time, they either gonna break it up or we going straight to jail. Too many eyes, too many cameras, too many with. Listen, I know some of y'all may not relate. Y'all ain't never been outside. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with not being outside, but some of y'all ain't never had enemies. Some of y'all ain't never been in no shootout or shot nobody or been shot at none of that so and i'm not i'm not making that a bragging point that's nothing to be proud about i'm just saying i know some of these examples y'all may not relate to all right last one have you ever felt the urge to take it to the next level with your partner and thought to yourself they not even worth it yeah two, two, 20 you said free body and all but i let it go because i'm in front of my wife Ask, see hey shout out to all the thinking thinking men out there and thinking women Bro said it was a free body, but his wife was there. Anybody that's ever been in the streets, I've never been stabbed to stab somebody, but I have shot somebody twice, and I've been shot at. Y'all, bullets zooming by, whether you're sending them or they're coming in your direction, is a very traumatic experience from a nigga that done shot somebody. It just ain't something you want to expose people to just for the fuck of it, especially people you love. You don't even want them... You don't want them in the vicinity. You don't, You really don't even want your niggas to be nowhere near that because if niggas spin the block, they'll fuck around and touch the person that was with you if they can't find your ass. I know a lot of y'all ain't gonna understand the dynamics of that, but playing in them streets, you have to be extremely strategic because niggas are smart and technology is on another level. Last thing you wanna do is play with the wrong nigga who understand IP addresses. Your lady posts her new hairdo and he's sitting outside the salon waiting on her and you're not there to protect her honor. Or your children get off the bus. And yeah, y'all niggas don't play fair. I know we all topic a little bit, but just for real, for real, y'all. Anybody that think that shit a game or just willy nilly out there, be careful, man. Because nigga, you only die one time. But anyway, y'all, you wore your kid gloves. In all those situations, believe it or not, the primary action that you have and person you genuinely are took a back seat. Because you either took the time to think about the outcome or you already knew what type of individual you were dealing with. Remain a thinker at all times and be mindful that most people rarely want the interaction that their mouth is warranting them. Why even take it there? Why irritate shaky ground even more? Most importantly, why even give them the excessive energy and time knowing your child could benefit from it in a positive light than they will in a negative one? He or she 
So it's, I'm, I'm reading from the co-parenting curriculum in the catalog. It's the unlearn and relearn co-parenting curriculum. My, my bad, sis. I saw you ask that earlier. I'm on page 50 in it. Again, y'all, get y'all catalogs while they free because that free shit about to dry up. Let them be miserable and torn in their world. Do not allow their tricks to consume you or be used as an excuse to keep your child away from you even more. I can't stand my boss, but I need this money. I can't stand my enemy, but 25 years to life is not on my schedule right now. She is so annoying and clingy, but I need this moment of intimacy. You need your children as well. And even more than any of any of those above things listed. Lace up your kid gloves now. Parent trumps pride. I mean, let me slow down. Parenting trumps pride any day of the week. So y'all, let me answer this question real quick. Somebody said it was 60. Y'all with love, y'all are not reading. It's in the video. It's in the video. Y'all ain't watching the video nor reading. It's only like four sentences. You get my entire body of work for free, but you are going to pay for your shipping for everybody that's not understanding. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I genuinely don't know how, how what other way y'all want me to explain it. It's in a video. So, like, if you don't like to read, watch the video. If you don't want to watch the video, read the description. Other than that, y'all, there's no other way for me to be like, listen, a nigga finna send you a box this big. Like, I don't know if y'all been watching the videos, y'all. The box is like, I can't even demonstrate on camera. The box is this fucking big. Pay for your shipping and use the payment plan. It's 15 whole dollars. Y'all getting my whole, y'all, y'all know I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years. I've been doing this shit since 22. I'm 34 now. Y'all get everything I've created since day one. So yes, for everybody not understanding, all you have to pay is your shipping. Once those first 500 are gone, if you still want the same information, not only is you going to pay for your shipping, but you're going to pay individually for how much each of them curriculums cost. Definitely going to cost you $1,000. Like it's some people on here that paid $1,000 last year. So let y'all, this is the last page I'm reading. I'm not reading on this again, y'all. We're reading the unlearn and relearn co-parenting curriculum for anybody that's asking. It's inside the catalog. This is only a piece of the catalog. I'm in my room. The rest of it in my office, but this is just a piece of it. All right, y'all, check this out. I'm going to ask y'all five or six questions and we done. And if you are co-parenting, you a baby mom or a baby dad, like screen record, write these shits down. I'm going to go through them one time. The box is 23 inch by 11 inch. Yeah, bro, that motherfucker huge. It's a big ass box. Watch, when y'all get it to the crib, y'all gonna lift that motherfucker and be like, what's in this bitch? Crack it open. And... Listen, it's one of them boxes. You just open it and then and then just turn the motherfucker over and you'll see what, I mean, don't turn it up high because you're gonna bend your pages up. Big ass book. I don't have time to read all of them. Hey, I feel you, bro. I feel you. That, that's why you shouldn't order that bitch. Don't order it. Let somebody else get it who's gonna use it. All right, y'all, number one. For my co-parenters, did I say that right, co-parent? Yeah. Number one, why are y'all at odds? Ask yourself that. What did the problem stem from? What are we really beefing about three years later? We need to love on our fucking son or daughter. Number two, what took place? If a lot of y'all really articulate what actually took place, um, a lot of y'all would realize we're, be we're bickering and falling out over the dumbest shit in the fucking world. This shit is so trivial. You know what's even crazier? The shit that you beefing with mom or dad about, you don't went through with 50,000 other people and you had the utmost patience, the utmost love. But for them, for some reason, you just want to still be on the bullshit. Number three, when did it take place? Is it even still relevant? Bro, out of all you niggas on here that don't begin y'all kids because y'all baby mama moved on, with love, bro, you a sorry ass nigga. I'm in Miami, so I got mine within four days. Treasure, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah, y'all know we based in Florida, so all my Floridians, y'all should be coming. Y'all should be out of front door within two or three days. Uh, when did it take place? Is it even still relevant? That's a serious question because a lot of y'all beefs ain't even relevant no more. Since you done got dick from three new men, so why are you still mad at your baby daddy? You done lived three new lives. Bro, you got four kids on the way. Why is you mad that she done moved on, nigga? What's wrong with you? You, you don't own her, bro. You, she's not your slave. Sis, he ain't your slave. Let go. Like, you fucking John John now. Let go. Please. Number four. Has it grown you or has it slown you regarding being a parent in a functioning family? Y'all, the shit y'all be beefing about, it be slowing us down. Nigga, it was 10 years ago. Girl, you done remarried 14 times in 10 years. 
I done had 34 kids. We should be laughing about that shit. Now, man, remember how dumb we was in our 20s? We, <laughs> we thought we was going to actually get married and be together forever. That's how big my baby mama. We be laughing like, hey, you remember when we was fucking around at 17 and thought we was going to live to be 75 and still together? <laughs> we was crazy as fuck. Number five, is your current state and the effects it took put your family structure in a better or worse place? Ask yourself this. The current way that your system, your family system is set up, is it putting you and your family in a better or worse place? If you can logically say, hey, we have these decisions and these patterns that we follow as a family year in and year out, and we're still a dusty ass family, then logically, by way of common sense, you should probably want to change those, right? Uh, number seven, do you feel like it could be fixed if only for co-parenting, uh, co-parenting purposes? Most of our shit can be fixed, y'all. Most of our baby daddies ain't kill our mama, ain't kill our brothers, and vice versa. Anything outside of that can be fixed. And even if they kill them, it can be fixed. Number eight, what would need to be done for it to be fixed? These are real questions I want y'all to ask yourselves for the people who in these tur- uh, turbulent family structures. You ever thought of that? Like, damn, maybe I just want an apology. All right, bro, call baby mama and tell her how you feel. Articulate to her in an eloquent way how you feel, how it makes you feel, and that it still triggers you to this day. And then from there, see if you can like get that apology that you want oh so bad or that accountability that you want, whatever the case is, whatever you're looking for. Articulate the shit. Yeah, drop the egos for sure. Like call and be like, man, I got to keep it real with you. Man, that time I went through your phone and seen you with fucking Bruce, that shit broke my heart. And you know, like I still have I still have adverse feelings towards women overall based on that day that you hurt my feelings. And you may not get the response you want, but it could definitely help for y'all to at least articulate it. Like y'all will bottle that shit up and just hate this person for the next thousand years. No, that's, that's, that ain't healthy. You feel me? That's not what we doing. All right, y'all, next one. Number eight. No, I did number eight. Number nine. Is this a personal or family issue? If it's personal, you should definitely remove it, being that it has nothing to do with the child, but affects them the most. And I ain't reading nothing else, y'all. No matter of fact, I'm going to read one part. Last but not least, I dare you to send these questions and your answers to the other party you are holding resentment for in your co-parenting situation. More times, many times, a peaceful conversation, apology, or explanation can serve as the band-aid and A&D ointment to a deep wound. Other times we honestly don't know or even remember where the disconnect came in and realize it's not worth the distance it's costing to begin with. I'm gonna say it again, y'all. I dare you to send those questions and answers to the other party you were holding resentment for. Many times a peaceful conversation, apology, or explanation can serve as a band-aid and A&D ointment to a deep wound. Other times we honestly don't even know or remember where the disconnect came in and realized it's not worth the distance it's causing. I want y'all to think about that. Some of y'all beefing with your baby daddy right now and you can't even remember why. You can't even remember why. I'm done reading that, y'all. But anyway, if everybody ain't got their catalog and want it for free, I suggest y'all jump on it ASAP because once, once they not free anymore, y'all gonna have to pay shipping and you're gonna have to pay for the information I've been trying to give y'all years i'm gonna tell you again when you get your catalog and you go to the last page in that co-parenting curriculum uh y'all are gonna see that i wrote that shit 2000 2017 i believe 2017 i've been politicking on this shit for seven years at this point and some of y'all are 10 years deep in a fucked up co-parenting situation so me? Oh, t- thank you, bro. 2018. 2018, y'all. I was 20. How old was I when I wrote that? I'm 34. I was 28 years old. Hey, somebody mentioned in my voice slowing down and speeding up. Y'all, I just be doing that shit to me. I don't know what's up. It's people tell me that every live. Like, bro, you, your shit sound chopped and screwed. I don't know what it is, y'all. But anyway, y'all, y'all have a beautiful day. For everybody that want their catalog, I suggest you jump on it while it's free. Co-parenting, gold, art, real estate, guns, introducing the youngest to guns, uh, marketing, business, procrastination, budgeting, 
Uh, it's so much shit, y'all. I'm sitting here trying to, um, I don't know. I'm sitting here trying to name everything, and it's a lot of shit. But anyway, y'all, y'all, hey, appreciate y'all. Y'all have a beautiful day as well. Click the link in the bio, get y'all catalog, and just remember, y'all, your decisions today are gonna affect your tomorrow. You feel me? So I don't want you to think that like you're gonna get away from what you're doing today. Your children will evolve at some point, and questions will be asked. And you're going to have to live with... Oh, yeah, the flashcards, too. I forgot about the flashcards. They come with flashcards, too. But you're going to have to live with and live up to the shit that you...